I'd like to call the meeting of the Maricopa The broadcast County. is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning. I'd like to call the this meeting of the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors to order. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Yes, good morning. Supervisor Galvin? Present. Supervisor Gates? Here. Supervisor Hickman? Here. Supervisor Gallardo? Here. Chairman Sellers? Here. Chairman Sellers, Andrew Cummings, your OML attorney, is on the line. Thank you very much. Okay, before we get, get the ball rolling today, I will take my last chairman's prerogative. I don't want to keep our special guest waiting, so I'll be as quick as I can be. Serving as chair this last year has been challenging, but serving with other leaders in Maricopa County has made it very fulfilling. My fellow supervisors were always available to me, and I hope you know how much your input and guidance gave me strength. We faced many complex issues throughout the year. In each instance, we came together as a team. And for that, I am very thankful. I was also blessed with an outstanding professional staff. Joy, our team continues to take each challenge head on. I know we're all grateful for your continued professionalism during these very stressful times. And finally, I appreciated that our other county elected officials stood with us when asked. I know it was hard and I suspect it might not get easier anytime soon. So Bill, would you please introduce your guest? Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. It's really my honor uh, to introduce our guest today to lead us in the prayer and pledge. And she is joining us remotely and that is Helen Purcell. <laughs> Please. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Helen Purcell, it morning, is really Brian. perfect to have, Helen, thank you for joining us today, and I really think it's perfect uh, to have her leading us today because this is an important day to talk about the 2020 election and election integrity. And anything and everything that is done by the Elections Department and by the Recorder's Office uh, in Maricopa County is standing on the shoulders of Helen Purcell. She served as our recorder for seven terms, uh, 1988 through 2017, and she set the gold standard uh, in running elections, and of course that recording side too. Uh, and so, uh, Helen, I want to thank you for your service and thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Chairman Gates. Um, if you all will join me uh, as we pray. Please stand. Dear Lord, as we begin this new year of 2022, let us first give you thanks for all you provide for us each day. We come before you this day to seek your blessing and guidance on the group of leaders assembled here before us. They have shown great courage in the face of adversity, not unlike our founding fathers. Continue to instill in them the willingness to stand up for those same principles as they approach the many important and quite often daunting issues to come before them. Each of us has our individual belief, and we ask that you support us in those beliefs, keeping in mind that we are as diverse in our methods of worship as we are in our national origins. Let us therefore embrace all races, faiths, and political preferences as we ask today for your divine inspiration. Amen. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, the flag before you is your flag. It is my flag. Our soldiers serve under this flag, and many are laid to rest under this flag. We can do no less than to honor them by saying, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat>
Ellen, thank you so much for joining us today. What a, what a treat to have you open our meeting for us. So thank you so much. And Mr. Chairman, real quickly before Helen uh, exits our meeting, it's so great to see you, Helen. It's been a while, um, but uh, I worked for Helen for 14 years. <laughs> she was uh, definitely my boss and, and definitely a mentor. She uh, thrived along with uh, an excellent uh, executive staff uh, just thrived to make elections uh, just as as uh, great as it is right now. I mean, they just do a wonderful job in the elections department. They continue to just be the best when it comes to conducting uh, an open and, and fair election. And uh, it was just, it's, I'm just thrilled to see, to be able to see her uh, here with us today. So. Thank you, Helen, for your service in Maricopa <coughs> County, and thank you so much uh, for being here. It's definitely a, a wonderful surprise, so thank you. Great to see you. Thank you. Thank you, um, Steve. Okay, moving to our agenda item, uh, election of the 2022 Board of Supervisors Chairman and the Chairman's Address. Is there a motion for chairman of the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors for the year 2022? I'm, lo I'm looking at our new guy, but I'm gonna take this one. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I make this motion proudly and um, I hope that we get a chance to talk uh, about you two. Uh, I, I hope our new chairman will, will let us talk about uh, the old chairman uh, at some point in this meeting. So. Uh, but this is awfully important. Um, this shows to everyone what peaceful transition of power. This is a very large county, and I cannot wait uh, to see his leadership again uh, because I know it. I know how, what a fantastic person he is in the county, and the whole nation got to witness two fantastic chairmen when they went to Washington, D.C., put their hand on a Bible and talked about how this county ran a wonderful election. So with that, um, I would like to make the motion that Bill Gates becomes our next chairman of the board. And Mr. Chairman, I would be honored to second that nomination for Bill Gates to be our chair. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> we have no idea if you wanted it or not, Bill, but you're it. <laughs> okay, uh, just a few, a couple more comments from me before we uh, make the move. Uh, an outgoing chair might have concerns about the person that follows them. Will there be a change in course? Will there be a radical shift in how we solve problems? I have no such concerns. I could not be more pleased than to have Supervisor Gates as our chairman for 2022. He is an exceptional leader and a team player. And as Supervisor Hickman would say, it is his turn. <laughs> Congratulations, Bill, and thank you. Well, thank you very much. I'm, I'm honored uh, to be serving as chair again. Thanks everyone for the, the kind remarks. But uh, before we move on with the meeting, I, I really think that what we need to do is take a moment to uh, ponder and discuss the incredible chairmanship uh, of Jack Sellers. So with that, I would uh, turn it to uh, Supervisor Gallardo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, Jack, it has definitely been uh, an honor to, uh, to work with you as the chairman. You have really set the bar um, for these guys here. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll be comparing. 
Um, <laughs> we'll do a whole graft and everything, a whole demonstration. No, but uh, I'll, I'll, honestly, um, Jack, you've just been awesome to work with. Uh, easy to uh, p pick up the phone and 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 chew your ear off a few times, but nonetheless, uh, just been great leadership. This has been a tough year, not only dealing with uh, elections uh, chaos, but uh, but having to deal and uh, navigate through this 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 pandemic that seems like it's just will never go away. But nonetheless, your leadership has just been outstanding. You have always showed me such great respect and and always uh, interested in what I have to say, which I appreciate. And uh, you just have yourself and your whole team. Rick, where's Rick at? Rick Bohan, there he is, always hiding with his coffee. <laughs> Rick has just been awesome to deal with. I, Rick and I go back uh, legislative days, and he has always been a great person to work with. So, and Amy, I don't know where Amy Loper, I don't know if she's here. Is there she is? Amy hiding out, but uh, your staff, your whole office has just been great to work with, Jack. So, I appreciate it so much of your leadership and. Uh, Look forward to continuing working with you. Supervisor Galvin. Absolutely. Um, Jack, congratulations on a superb year of leadership here at the county at a time when the county really came under a national spotlight for both the elections issues and the issues on COVID. And I couldn't think of a better person to handle what the county has went through with your gentle hand and your firmness. Um, on a personal level, I also want to thank you for the warm hospitality you've uh, extended to me since I've only been on the board less than a month. And I want to echo what Steve said. Uh, Rick and Amy have been absolutely terrific in welcoming me. And Jack, you invited me to a couple events on my first day here on the board. And I joined you that Friday of that first week at an event in Gilbert. And I'll always remember that as my first event was with you. So thank you so much. And I really want to congratulate you for a perfect year that you had as a chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Galvin. Supervisor Hickman. When, uh, when you enter into politics and um, and do a job like this, a lot of it uh, becomes beca uh, a lot about me. Me, 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 you know, what am I doing? And um, I'm gonna go back to me once. Last year, once, maybe twice for Steve, uh, Stephen. Um, I was driving last year at this time, uh, I could not wait to get the chairmanship yoke off my back. Uh, for what this entire board was dealing with. Um, at the very start, uh, it felt like we were on an island, and I didn't know if I was leading correctly. And uh, you came in and absolutely emboldened me because you grabbed that spear and the shield and you carried it in an incredibly powerful way. Watching um, some of the comments made by taxpayers saying, you know, I like this Jack guy. And it's because you were incredibly strong on the first day. And it made me feel like what I was doing and trying to protect this county, the county workers, the election staff, and then what you've done uh, with it this year, I couldn't be more proud to be your colleague. So congratulations. You're feeling bittersweet right now. This afternoon, you're going to feel really happy. You're going <laughs> to, you are going to, you're going to drive home and feel some pressure off you, and know that you get back to be uh, that guy that's uh, the uh, power center, uh, getting the rebounds and helping your your point guard, who's going to be the the new chairman. So, uh, thank you, Jack. What a great sense. What a great style of leadership you brought at the right time for this county. So I appreciate that. Thank you, Supervisor Hickman. Was that a uh, comment about me being the point guard or reference to my height or just? You've never struck me as being a rebounder. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for those remarks. And, and I would just add, I, I think I can put it this succinctly. Jack Sellers was the perfect chair for this board in 2021. There is no one in this state, and I would argue in this nation, who is better positioned to have the strength, the wisdom, the gentle touch, as Supervisor Galvin put it. You led this board just the same way that Supervisor Hickman had in the year before through unimaginable pressure. 
and I couldn't be prouder to have been your vice chair. I'll never forget that the many moments, including going back to Congress and sitting next to you, testifying under oath, there was never a doubt in my mind. I knew I had my partner there and that we were there for the elections workers and the voters of Maricopa County. So uh, you are the Arizona of the year to me. Uh, and again, I just thank you for your leadership and I really look forward to continuing to work with you. Wow, thank you all so much. Uh, I, I just feel like anything that we accomplished during the year was because we were a team working together and, and that includes all the other electeds in the county. You know, a goal of mine when I first became chairman was to say, we need to work together as, a, as one county. And I'm so proud of what we've done this year. So thank you all so much. Jack, why don't you keep standing? Uh, because we have a little tradition here at Maricopa County, and we would like to uh, continue that. So pardon me for one moment. Jack, we wanted to acknowledge you for your incredible leadership. You should be getting a lot more than a plaque, uh, but, but we'll start with this. And again, I hope this is something that, that you can, can display with pride in the years ahead. Again, thank you for your leadership. Come over here. All right. Well, thank, you. thank you. And the state senate probably has a plaque for you too. <laughs> <laughs> Go on down there, and I'm sure they'll hand it to you. And. And so with that, I would ask uh, my fellow members of the board if we could head down for a picture. Right. Oh. Sorry, okay. I guess we're gonna stay up here? Yeah, stay up there until we kind of come together. Perfect. I think they must have grabbed the plaque. Okay, perfect. Mr. Chairman, can we have a picture also with the just, we'll, we'll have some personal distance and take the mask off. I think we're gonna do that. We're down gonna there. do yeah. that down there? Yeah. We got somebody, space? Okay. Yeah. Am I taking this? I think you can leave that up here. Are we taking our mask off? Oh, I see what you're saying. Remind you to bring you to Congratulations. Okay, do you guys want to? Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't enough. Right. And we'll end up using the one from the that camera. <laughs> oh, we need to have 13. <laughs> okay, great. And then if I can just ask you guys to have a seat in the front. Sure. Well, first of all, I'd like to begin by welcoming the uh, uh, various officials we have from Maricopa County. Recorder Stephen Richer, Superintendent Steve Watson, Treasurer John Allen, our uh, Clerk of the Court, Jeff Fine, and also uh, Presiding Judge Joe Welty. 
Thank you to all of you for being here today. We really appreciate the partnership. And then am I missing, did I miss someone else? I'm sorry, and, and of course, Assessor Eddie Cook. I, I saved the best for last, my apologies, Eddie. I wanna thank all of you for your partnership over the last year. It is so appreciated by this board. Supervisor Sellers, Hickman, and Gallardo. We've been through a lot in the last couple of years, and it was my honor to serve alongside all three of you, to see your integrity, your determination, and your guts. It's my honor to serve as a chair of this board. And Supervisor Galvin, welcome. And thank you for your willingness to serve, and thank you for your commitment to the truth. And to my family, my wife Pam. Pam, thank you for being my rock the last two years and the last 25 years of our marriage. Thank you for reminding me to always do what's right, not what's easy. I love you. And to our daughters, Emily, Corinne, and Natal, thank you for bringing so much joy into our lives. Thank you for grounding me, and thank you for reminding me why I do this job. This is an exciting time for us here at Maricopa County, and I'm proud to serve as the chair. As we look forward into the, the next year, we know that we've been through a lot. A lot is a county, and a lot is the American family. I could not have imagined when I handed the gavel to Supervisor Hickman two years ago what we would experience and how we have been challenged as a county. We've been challenged by a global pandemic. We've been challenged by rising prices and labor shortages. And we've been challenged by the biggest threat to our democracy in our lifetimes. It was a year ago when I was watching on TV, I saw American citizens climbing walls, breaking glass, pushing police officers out of the way and storming the halls of the US Capitol. And many of these people did it because they believed that they were saving our country from an election that they had been told had been stolen. That was a true tragedy and it broke my heart. And it made me wonder what type of world our daughters would be inheriting. Because the quality of our life is based upon the quality of our democracy. And the quality of our democracy is based on the strength of our democratic institutions. And our democratic institutions, including Maricopa County government, is at risk because of an extreme amount of misinformation. And unfortunately, many people in positions of power, they've fit into this, or they've simply turned a blind eye. They've listened to the loud few and told them what they want to hear, because that's the easy thing to do. But here, we don't do what's easy. We do what's right. And that's why we're gonna keep telling the truth. Polling shows that a significant amount of Americans believe that there's widespread fraud in our elections. There's even some people who believe that the 2020 audit of our election showed proof of fraud. But I'm here to tell you, again, there wasn't any fraud. And I appreciate that our elections workers have spent the last three months examining in great detail the allegations brought by the Senate's contractors. They've looked at everything from envelopes to signatures to people who have moved. Now the Cyber Ninjas claimed that there were 53,000 questionable ballots in that 2020 election. Well, what our experts have found is not 53,000, but 100, less than 100 questionable ballots out of 2.1 million. In my first major act as chair, later today, I'll preside over a hearing where we will go into and have a deep dive into the 100-page report that Maricopa County has put together responding to the Cyber Ninja's allegations. I hope that it's gonna be the last word on this issue. But if people would like to watch that hearing, they can watch it on our YouTube channel 
or they can review that report later on justthefacts.vote. When people attempt to undermine a democratic election, it puts at risk everything that we take for granted in a free country, security, speech, and economic progress. And that's why Maricopa County has not been silent. And that's why we will not be silent in the face of lies. We have seen how people react when they think that an election has been stolen. They stormed the U.S. Capitol. They threatened to kill and hang and shoot elections workers. And they called other Americans traitors. The American family cannot stand for that, and I will not stand for that. This board has worked over the past few years with Recorder Richer, and before that, with former Recorder Fontes and Purcell to make our great elections even better. But we cannot rest on our laurels. And 2022 has to be our best election yet and our most transparent election. So we're gonna be working closely with the recorder's office to do everything that we can, reaching out to diverse groups proactively, using live streams, videos, public hearings, nonpartisan voter outreach to rebuild that confidence in our elections. That is so very important to us. But even though we know that our election machines are not connected to the internet, we are still going to use the technology available, including to, to make sure that there's no question about any access to our election machines, including putting special cages in place around our election machines that will make sure that no electromagnetic signals can come in or out. Running safe, secure elections in 2022 is my top priority. Another issue that has been a real challenge to the American family and to Maricopa County, of course, is our ongoing battle with COVID-19. Too many people have lost their lives because of this virus. Too many people have had their lives and livelihoods disrupted. We've all gone through too much in the last two years. But unfortunately, the pandemic hasn't ended yet. But I want to take this opportunity to thank our healthcare workers and our first responders for all they have done, not only to fight the pandemic, but also to fight some of the misinformation. We've got misinformation as it relates to the virus as well, particularly with the vaccines. Let me be clear, we know that people who take the vaccine are less likely to be hospitalized and less likely to die from COVID-19. So I encourage all of you, get your recommended vaccines and get your recommended boosters. But I'll tell you, I'm proud of what Maricopa County Public Health has done to limit the number of bad outcomes from COVID-19. Our team has worked for the last two years to get PPE, to get vaccines, and to get testing materials out th distributed throughout Maricopa County. And they've also done a great job of getting data-driven information out to our citizens so they understand how COVID-19 is spreading in the county and what the impact is going to be on our county. So I want to thank our public health workers, our volunteers, and all of our partners in the community. They have literally saved lives for us. And I want public health to understand that I am committed and I'm confident that this board is committed to doing whatever needs to be done to support their efforts so that we can finally bring this pandemic to an end. Now, when we're trying to determine how successful we are in our pandemic response, we need to look not only at the health, at the health in our community, but also the livelihood of our residents. And I think Maricopa County has a very good record on this. We have gotten thousands of businesses loans that have helped them to stay open. We have gotten money to homeowners, to thousands of them, 
to help keep them in their homes. And as far as schools are concerned, we've gotten them computers and Wi-Fi hotspots so that kids can, can, could continue to learn even though they were no longer in the schools. Jack and Clint, you led our effort on that, and we thank you for that. Now, with a more American Rescue Plan Act funding coming to the county, we're in a position to continue to help people. First of all, in a, in a pandemic, we have a shortage of nurses, of course. So we're supporting a program where nurses can go directly from school, get into hospitals, and start doing what they, what they desire to do and to help saving lives. We also know that we've got an issue in our county with affordable housing. And so we have committed $30 million to helping low and moderate income folks get into a home. And sadly, we also have more people on our streets these days. So the board has committed to working on projects that will get roofs over their heads, will help them to get a stable job, and will help them to get the health care and the mental health care that they need. Maricopa County has long been known as an advocate on homelessness, but just last month, we committed more money to homelessness than we ever had in the history of Maricopa County. Supervisor Gallardo, thank you for your advocacy on this important issue. If, if anyone needs help who's watching this, go to maricopa.gov rescue. And if you'd just like to see how we're spending the federal dollars, go to maricopa.gov slash rescue funds. You know, I'd like for people to see Maricopa County government as a partner and not as an adversary. I think that we ought to be doing is helping people get things done by lowering their taxes, by limiting regulation, and by cutting red tape. And in fact, in that vein, I think that we ought to cut property taxes again this year, just like we did last year. This will help people because it'll get more money in their pockets. And also, we're in a position where we can do that without negatively impacting the services that we provide in the community. In fact, I think that we ought to be looking at how we can improve our customer service. I think that someone should be able to apply for a permit in their pajamas at home one day and the next day be able to get that permit and start the project. I think that someone ought to be able to go on our website, click on anywhere on a map of Maricopa County and report excess garbage or an abandoned vehicle. I think that we ought to have our county call center uh, uh, supplemented by online chats. And I think that we should have on Maricopa County, uh, maricopa.gov, where people can go on and observe our government performance in real time. Now, these are not pipe dreams. These are actually things that we're already doing in Maricopa County. But we can even do more. And that's why during my last chairmanship, I said that we ought to take the data that we have as a county, the technology that we have, and the partnerships that we have to create a smart government that is focused on providing quality customer service. Thanks to the efforts of our county manager, Joy Rich, and her team, we've already been very successful in that effort. Thank you, Joy. And I'm excited that in the upcoming year, we're going to be a redoing, refreshing our strategic plan as a county. And this strategic plan is going to be free of government speak, and it's going to be focused on customer service and on economic development. But I think we should even go one step further. Once we've established those goals and we have that data, we shouldn't just have it on internal dashboards that our directors can look at, but put it out on maricopa.gov so that our residents can judge us by our performance. In everything that we do, we should be timely and transparent. And I'm proud to say we're well on our way. Two years ago, life in America changed when the pandemic hit our shores. A year ago, life in America changed again when insurgents stormed the U.S. Capitol. But through it all, Maricopa County public servants were here doing what was right and what was needed to protect the American family. 
our workers here at Maricopa County have been on the front lines of the public health emergency response, the defense of dis democracy, and they've been at the forefront of providing better customer service to all of our residents. I thank the 13,000 Maricopa, 13, Maricopa County employees for all of their hard work. But I can't promise to them that the critics are gonna get any quieter in the upcoming year. And I can't promise that the spotlight is gonna get any less bright. I can't even promise that people outside of this county complex will acknowledge their work on customer service, on process improvements, or staying up late that night to make sure that every eligible vote was counted as it was cast. But what I can promise them is that the work that they do matters and that by simply doing their jobs, they are defending our democracy and upholding our institutions. I'm excited about the future and what can be done. I believe that our Maricopa County workers can set a new bar for government service. It can be done. People want to be in this county. They're moving here, 200 people a day, 4.5 million people call this desert oasis home. Maricopa County has done great work in the past few years, but we must do even better in 2022 because the American family depends on it. Thank you. Okay, all right, on with the, uh, on with the meeting. Uh, we're now gonna move to item number five under clerk of the board, liquor license applications. Agent change and acquisition of control for Superstition Manor Wedding and Event Center. Uh, Madam Clerk, are there any registered speakers or comments received on item five? Chairman Gates, none were received for item five. All right, the board will now consider item five. Your district, brother. Your district. <laughs> we'll make a motion to approve item five. <laughs> All right, thank you for the motion, Supervisor Galvin. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Sellers. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, all opposed? All right, motion passes unanimously. Mr. Chairman, I just l looked at, for the historical record, um, congratulations on the first uh, motion you've ever made uh, in person. It is, it is extremely nice and gratifying to, to be at full strength again going into this year and uh, um, unfortunately, you know, at some point you'll start getting the rhythm, Tom. Um, so I wanted to see how you were going to handle that one. And, and also, Jack, that is of the first time, I think, in uh, a year you got to make a motion. So <laughs> welcome, welcome back to that horse again. Um, but uh, again, welcome, welcome to the board, Tom. I can only improve from here on that regard. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might want to turn on your microphone so I can hear you too. It's on, it's on. Oh, is it? <laughs> I got that part. All right, All thank right. you, Mr. Excellent. Chairman. Excellent, thank you, Supervisor Hickman. All right, uh, next we have uh, Clerk of the Board, six and seven, special event license, Fun Lakers Club, Arizona Trail Association. Under Clerk of the Court, we have eight, budget adjustment for the Clerk of the Superior Court Document Retrieval Fund. Under Superior Court, we have nine through 10, appoint the Superior Court Commissioners as Superior Court Judge Pro Temp. The Board will now consider items six through 10. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items six through 10. Thank you, Supervisor Sellers. Do we have a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Hickman. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? 
motion passes unanimously. Next, under county management, Assistant County Manager Leanne Bone, 11, appoint and replace a Maricopa County Workforce Development Board member. The board will now consider item 11. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of item 11. Thank you, Supervisor Gallardo. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Hickman. We have motion and second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? All right, that motion passes unanimously. Next, under county offices, we have Air Quality 12 Travel Reduction Program Annual Report. Under Animal Care and Control, we have 13 Kennel Permit Renewal. For Correctional Health, we have 14 Agreement with Regis College. And under Elections 15 through 16, Appropriation Adjustments for Grant Funding from Arizona Department of Homeland Security. The Board will now consider items 12 through 16. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 12 through 16. Second. All right, thank you for the motion and the second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? All right, that motion passes unanimously. Uh, next, we'll move uh, to uh, under elections continued 17 precinct committeemen. The board will now consider item 17. Uh, Mr. Chairman, move approval item number 17. Thank you, Supervisor Hickman. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, uh, Supervisor Galvin. Motion and second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? No. All right, that motion passes. Next, under emergency management 18, amend agreement with the Arizona Department of Homeland Security. And under procurement services 19, contract for employee assistance program services. The board will now consider items 18 and 19. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of item 18 and 19. Thank you, Supervisor Gallardo. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Sellers. Motion and second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? That motion passes unanimously. Next, under public health, 20 through 24, amend IGAs and contracts with Arizona Board of Regents, City of Phoenix, Arizona Department of Health Services, Arizona Alliance. 25 through 28, contracts and agreements and IGAs with Arizona Adverse Childhood Experiences Consortium, Banner Poison and Drug Information Center, Arizona Department of Health Services, Board of Regents of the Nevada System, 29, grant funds from the Arizona Board of Regents, and 30, purchase order from the Arizona Department of Health Services. Board will now consider items 20 through 30. Mr. Chairman, move approval of items 20 through 30. Second. All right, thank you for the motion and the second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? All right, that motion passes unanimously. Next, under the consent agenda, clerk of the board, 31 duplicate warrants, 32 secured and unsecured tax roll corrections, and 33 abstract of the roll containing the violations by taxing jurisdictions of all property in the county. The board will now consider items 31 through 33. Move to approve items 31 through 33, Mr. Chairman. Second. Thank you. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? That motion passes unanimously. Now uh, we will uh, convene as the uh, Maricopa County Stadium. Well, sorry, we'll recess as the Board of Supervisors and convene as the Stadium District Board of Directors. And the board will now consider 34 designation of officers. Mr. Chairman, I would like to nominate Supervisor Gates as chairman of the Maricopa County Stadium District. Second that motion. All right. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? All right, that motion passes unanimously. Uh, and uh, do we have any other items to handle? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to nominate Supervisor Gallardo as the secretary of the Maricopa County Stadium District. All right. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. All right. Motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? All right, motion passes. Congratulations uh, again, Supervisor Gallardo, continuing in that role. Nobody wants the job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we'll now adjourn as the Stadium District Board of Directors and reconvene as the Board of Supervisors. Uh, Madam Clerk, do we have any under public comment? Item uh, 35, do we have any public comments today? Chairman, Supervisors, we did receive a few comments, six regarding COVID and masks two regarding courts and the jails, 
and one regarding elections and ballots. And all of these items have been shared with all the board offices. Great, thank you, thank you very much. And then uh, item 36 is our summary of current events uh, where we have the opportunity to, to hear about things that are going on in the community. Let me start with our uh, county manager, Joy Rich. Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to thank our outgoing uh, chairman, Mr. Sellers, for all of his leadership. He's just been a kind, measured leader that I think have made us all feel very confident during the last year. And Chairman Gates, looking forward to the initiatives you've outlined, particularly the strategic planning. That's how we align our organization with the vision and policies of this board. And I think we're ready to modernize that and put some real cutting edge tools to use so our, our uh, um, citizens can follow along with that and, and understand the services the county is providing. So thank you. Excellent, thank you. Look forward to that. Uh, Supervisor Gallardo. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, just once again, thank you, uh, Supervisor uh, Sellers, for your great leadership and great, uh, great uh, vision there, Mr. Gates. I loved it. Uh, always interesting to uh, to, to see what uh, what's upcoming, and it's it's always good to hear all the great uh, great uh, uh, thoughts there. Um, the one thing that really stands out, and, and I was so surprised to see Helen this morning. I wasn't expecting that, so it was great. Um, but, you know, you, you think back, and, and, and the whole last year was, for the most part, dominated by our elections and, and the 2020 elections. And uh, when it comes to the conduct of an election, I think um, for years it's always been very um, kind of nonpartisan. Both parties come together and try to figure out what's the best way to conduct the elections. And I, I can't help but remember, uh, as Helen was the county recorder, and, and she would go down to the state capitol, and as lawmakers would fight on everything, we'd fight on everything. But when it came down to elections, both parties would turn to Helen and say, what do you think? You know, she, she, she actually developed the policy. She said, no, this is good, this is bad. And we followed her. She was the expert. And, uh, and it's just not like that anymore. And, and uh, I know we have a new recorder. I think a recorder may have stepped out. But, you know, I look forward to his leadership. I know he plans on going down there and, and really advocating for good public policy. But uh, hopefully, uh, who knows what's going to happen. You're going to have some very powerful people down at the Capitol starting next week. And I see there's already election bills uh, already pre-filed. Um, hopefully, at the end of the day, uh, whatever bills are passed out, I'm hoping that they um, are focused on making sure the elections um, are, are, are fair, they're open, they're transparent, and uh, they don't leave anyone out. And uh, we'll just have to see what happens. But that's under your leadership, Mr. Chairman, so good luck. <laughs> well, you know I'll be coming to see you to get your thoughts on this. Thank you very much for those comments, uh, Supervisor Gallardo. Supervisor Galvin. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Um, I just want to say thank you, everyone, for welcoming me to the board over this past month. It's been fantastic. Um, but it was really nice to see that our year started with Helen Purcell, someone who has served with dignity and grace and has really maintained a high reputation with both parties over the last couple of decades. So I think it's only fitting that we started the year with Helen Purcell. And then once again, Mr. Sellers, thank you so much for your leadership to leave the county in good stead for Mr. Gates to take over. And Mr. Gates, I really appreciated your theme about the American family. Um, I think that is something that I thought about as well when I applied uh, for this position and thinking about the families that move here and the families that live here. And I think your leadership will be fantastic for this moment for the county, um, especially when you said we don't do what's easy, we do what's right. And that really struck with me. And uh, I think we're going to see that this year from this board and from Joy and from all of the elected officials and the county staff. Um, just as well, I'm also worried about our constituents in COVID right now. Uh, COVID cases are really ramping up, I think, at an alarming rate. Um, in fact, I know people um, at my child's school, uh, through work, through the community. Um, it's just been stunning to see the increase in cases just in the recent weeks. So I know with uh, Mr. Gates's chairmanship, we're really going to look at that and pay attention to that because I think we have to look out for the safety of our constituents. And then I just look forward to working with all of you here. Um, I highly respect all of you and really appreciate everything you've done for me so far. So thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, now I would like to turn it over to the gentleman who I look forward to working, I'll be working with everyone on the board, but who I look forward to working with as my vice chair, Clint Hickman. Well, thank you for, for that honor, Bill. Um, 
I appreciate it. I, the last time I was your vice chair, I appreciate it. And it's, and it's because for a central reason, uh, you ran your chairmanship and you looked towards us and the board and to bring our skill set uh, to different things to continue to keep this county running uh, the way we found it, uh, the way I found it when I was appointed to this board so many years ago and then ran for it. Um, so I, it's, it's a high honor. I can tell you that uh, as you made your speech, I was ready to run through a wall for you again on any topic. Um, you have always been a great communicator. If something's bugging you, you say it to our face and we talk it out. We fix the problem and uh, we get on the same page. And um, that seems to happen all the time. So I look forward uh, to working for a guy like you and I also am honored to work as vice chairman for a board like this and with individuals that are the highest of integrity and character. So Jack, again, I've said it, I, I hope you believe it. Um, what a great chairmanship and it sucks to not be able to have the time to do, put things in motion uh, that you wanted to accomplish in a year and I'm hoping your vision statement from a year ago, I'm sure it was reflected in Bill's, we're gonna work towards that. Uh, just like you worked uh, trying to bring things over the line that I was trying to get started. Um, so I, I appreciate that and I appreciate your service uh, to this county and uh, Bill again, I couldn't be prouder. And when you talk about the family, I wanna thank personally the ladies in your life uh, for being here. Um, and to stick with this minutia of a, of a quick meeting um, because I wanted to uh, thank you. If I lost the support of my family, I would quit tomorrow. Don't forget that. Your dad's a great man. I appreciate serving with him. I look forward to working for you guys and your family too. Thanks so much, Clint. It really means a lot. And uh, sure look forward to, to working with you again for, for another year. And with that, let me turn it to Supervisor Sellers. Thank you so much, and, and thank you all for all your comments. I am so proud to serve on this board. I, I couldn't ask for anything that I'd rather do than serve with all of you on this board. Uh, and, and what an honor to be your chairman last year. And I am very optimistic that 2022 is going to be a very productive year for all of us. So thank you all. Thank you again, uh, Supervisor Sellers, for your leadership as chair. It was such a joy to, to work under you as chair. And I think for people who are watching this may see us getting a little emotional, but it, it's for a reason. I, it's because everyone sitting up here takes their job seriously and understands the importance uh, that, that, that this board serves and the solemn trust that, that the voters put in us. We all take that seriously. And we see it as a privilege and we know that it's fleeting. But while we're in these positions, just like, you know, we could only imagine to do one tenth of what Helen Purcell did during, during her time. But we're here, we're here to make a difference and then we move on. So I, I just, one thing I, I wanted to add in particular, in addition to thanking Joy and her whole team for just the incredible work that they, they have done, they do setting the standard, the gold standard in government services as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but I also wanna uh, take a point of personal privilege and acknowledge my chief of staff, Zach Shira, and my deputy chief of staff, Chelsea Lett, for everything that they have done uh, 
and that they will be doing in the year ahead. We've got a great team. I uh, feel so fortunate to have the opportunity to, to work with both of you. And again, uh, to my family, thanks so much for coming. Thanks for sticking around uh, through all of this. And um, if you stick around a little bit longer, I might even take you to lunch. So, uh, <laughs> all right. So with that, this meeting, oh, and also wanted to mention uh, at 1.30, uh, we will be back for the hearing uh, discussing with our elections experts uh, Maricopa County's response to the Cyber Ninja report. So we hope you can all join us then. Thanks so much. This meeting's adjourned. <laughs>